Super woke. I'm ready. It's time for the money, my nigga. Facts. <laughs> no cap. You call me old man waves. Damn you, old man. Fuck your old. Damn it, Wade. And welcome to the Old Man Wade Show. I am your host, the God of Stubborn, the Lord of Laughter, Old Man Wade. And before you get into this, I have a message for everybody listening. Splendid! Now this oh, is a... Ch- I'm known to be quite vexing. I'm just forewarning you. <laughs> I'm a bit of an asshole. I'm a bit annoying. But I guess what? And I'm happy I'm a hypocrisy, so... You don't like it, fuck off. <laughs> That's really how I feel about it. But um, I'm super happy to have... a. Uh, First, let me just introduce you at the pinnacle of political perfection, the superior, Super Walk Abby. What up, everybody? So we have that. And then um, we have my nemesis here. <laughs> uh, currently in the West Coast, but he is an East Coast na- native. Host of Actually, the- I'm in the South. Serious. Texas is not the West Coast. Serious. It's on the West Coast. It's west of the Mace of the um, Mississippi. It's the West Coast. It's one hour different from you. I don't care. It's still the West That's Coast. That's Central Time. For the love of, for the love of, are we starting already? Well, I mean, West Coast. I would be three hours behind you. That's a pretty big difference. I you Google shit already. Am I right, Javi? Who's right on this one? I would say you're right because the Southwest starts like around like Arizona, Nevada. I fuck y'all. Fuck y'all both. Texas. Texas is the deep south, yo. Actually, I want to call it the deep south. It's the south. It's the south. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Texas, Texas is neither the west nor the east coast. So fine, whatever. I will yes. take. I will take the loss on this one. Starting out one and zero. Oh, hey, I'm a non-biased arbiter, so you know I'll keep. I'll keep an honest score. But I will. I will say this: that old man most likely will win. So. Oh yeah, my, <laughs> my rules and my skewed up um, <laughs> system. So yeah, like like I'm gonna be unbiased here. What do I look like? But uh, yeah, but we got my man here. We got a uh, uh, excuse me. He's from uh, the city of Baltimore. Introduce yourself, please. I mean, I've been here like a thousand times, but it's been like a while. So it's good to be back. It's Brandon uh, from a bunch of podcasts. Why so serious? Hindsight. Return to Oswald, which I guess people really like. Which I don't know why, because I'm really getting pissed off reviewing that fucking show. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad to be back. I got a lot to say. Oh yeah, I know we do. So should we just get right into it? Let's get into it. So <clears throat> let me start off with a story. So um, many of you may not know. Many of you may not know this, but I'm not a smoker. Not really my thing. I don't enjoy getting high. It's just you know not for me. <clears throat> Excuse me, all the coffee, ladies and gentlemen. So one day my wife says, no, excuse me, one day I say to my wife, hey, I think I want to get high and I want to watch Rick and Morty. The new season has been incredible, <laughs> has been incredible and I've loved every minute of it. So I was like, you know what? Let's make this happen. So I get high and I'm using a PAX. Um, Harvey, using a what? A PAX. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Harvey, can you explain what a PAX is just because I'm for the, for the weed, weedly impaired? PAX is a... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, herb or a marijuana flower vaporizer. So it's a vaporizer, but instead of using an oil cartridge, you stuff it with some traditional devil's lettuce and it heats up the actual THC, CBD, whatever components are in weed instead of actually burning it. So apparently it's a little bit healthier and it gets you fucked up. So Mm -hmm. I'm I'm smoking out of that or whatever. And And my wife says, you need a strong pull. I said, okay, cool. So I take a nice strong pull and I'm like, oh, I'm enjoying it. I'm getting high. Yeah, she, she punked you. <laughs> so I was good. So then the PAX battery ran out and we switched to a pen. And now apparently you do not have to take such a strong pull when you're smoking out of a pen. Oh, I said, no, before we get there, I decided that I wanted Chinese food after getting high. <laughs> that tracks. And I, it was impossible for me to order Chinese food while I was high. I was sitting there, like, they was like, oh, well, do you, um, do you want this? And I'm like, huh? And my wife's like, they asked if you want this. I go, oh, okay. Then they asked me another question. I go, huh? And Ariana goes, 
They actually didn't want this. And my wife goes, give Ariana the phone. <laughs> so, and I just giggled the entire time they ordered. And it was just a mess. So back to the, the previous part. So I take the pen and I take a really big hit, not knowing that you're not supposed to take a big hit off of a pen. Because as I, I was told, I have baby lungs. <laughs> I coughed for about 10 fucking minutes. And Maria felt horrible. And it was it was an experience, and then I remembered why I don't like getting high. So how was your Rick and Morty experience on weed? It was fucking phenomenal. Yeah? <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I, I sat and I giggled and I laughed, and and I just was mesmerized by the colors, <laughs> just everything that was going on. I loved it. That reminds me, I bought a PAX when I was living in California. And I have no idea where it's at because Texas is like, I can't get the cartridges. Like I can't get the things that go inside the pods, whatever they call it. Really? Yeah. But that was like a hundred dollars. Like that thing was expensive. Oh, you got the PAX error. So the PAX that you're talking about, I think uses the oil. Yeah. The PAX PAX sponsors. PAX sponsors. And then you have the PAX. Yeah. The, the, uh, the traditional PAX PAX that you, that use her. I mean, I don't know what, Texas, yeah, I had the PAX era. It used like oil cannabis. Yeah, 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 those are awesome. I've been, I've been, I've been using that. Some of I can't food. find it. And yeah, I haven't you... smoked since I moved here because I don't know. Like it's been a pandemic, so it's not like I've been able to meet people to yeah. be like, "Hey, man, where where you get weed from?" Like I don't fucking, I don't fucking know you want. I feel like there should be like apps or like forums that can help you with this, but I haven't went down that road. I don't know what what was. Like, I would be afraid to smoke weed in Texas, to be honest with you. I mean, in my house, anybody gonna run up in my house. That's facts. But I but, feel um, like I need to know someone. Like, you need to know someone. I may, I may know somebody. If you know somebody, I need to know that somebody. Let me, um, let me see if I can put something together for that. And remember, Texas is a big state. Um, uh, no, it's Houston. Uh, okay. That's the only reason I, only reason I even know is I was like, oh, wait, I know, I think I know somebody in Houston that may may be able to help you out so i'm going to houston next weekend for the um black black college band show or whatever all the black colleges having like a band competition yeah oh that sounds lit yo is nick cannon gonna be there i don't don't know my wife's making me go she went to hbcu Uh, all right wait 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 I'm surprised you didn't go to an HBC. I HBC. almost went to one. I went. I was recruited by Hampton, and I almost yeah. went to Hampton. And I, kind of, and I regret not going to Hampton, but I was really close to going to Hampton, but I didn't go. You got that, yo, I go to homecoming every week, every year type vibe. Yeah, you do. No. <laughs> My wife does. So she went to Bethune-Cookman, Daytona oh, Beach. Oh, wow. That's black, black. All right. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> black, black. No, I love it. I wish I went to an HBC, to be honest with you. I actually just wish I went to college in general. Like I do, I absolutely regret not going. I don't know if you do. Yeah, you, you know, may. I regret the experience of um. Okay. All, all the fucking and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the college experience is fun. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. But it's a lot. It's a lot. So speaking of fucking, I got a a topic we do. <laughs> Yo, Segway King. Yeah. So, you, uh, do you guys know what OnlyFans is? Yeah, no. who don't know what OnlyFans is? All right. So, for those of you who don't know, OnlyFans is a content subscription service based in London. Uh, content creators can earn money for users who subscribe to their content. Um, the fans. It allows content creators to receive funding directly from their fans on a monthly basis, as well as one-time and paid-per-view features. So here's the problem. <laughs> and this is absolutely hysterical to me because. This this is seems this literally seems to be the equivalent of cutting your nose off to spite your face. So OnlyFans is now getting rid of sex work. So if you've done anything that so if you have any sexually explicit content, you will not be allowed to have an OnlyFans account. I have an update. That's not true. Really? Yes. So I have a friend that's uh breaking news. Quite uh prominent on only fans i have the um so it's okay so you go with what you have because i haven't um someone posted an email that they got from the uh only fans so you go yeah with- i have a friend that's quite prominent on only fans uh she's made over two hundred thousand dollars since 2019 
Send the link. Um, <laughs> and she got an email from them, and they basically said, like, that's not true. Uh, certain things are going to be banned, but not all adult content. And then OnlyFans recently did a tweet yesterday saying that part of this change was because they had to they something about securing payment for sex workers or something like that, and the yeah. banks wouldn't handle it. And basically, in the email they sent out to users, is that like they're figuring out a, a separate way to handle that for sex workers. Because ultimately, like I think what you were getting at, <laughs> they could get a bunch of, they're getting investors and people are into OnlyFans because they're bringing in so much fucking money. Mm-hmm. But they're bringing in all this fucking money because of sex work. And so <laughs> if you're like, I'm about to invest in this company that's really successful. Now, this is what I want you to do stop doing everything that made you really successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they somebody probably sat back for a second was like this is really do we really because here's the you know if you know when i first noticed this before this came out k michelle was on instagram live and she said that she has signed some type of deal with only fans to release her music so all her, her new album and her new single and music videos are going to be exclusive to only fans and i was like huh only fans sign an artist now that's interesting that's not a that's, that's a dope idea. Yeah, I was like, well, yeah, I was like, that's interesting. But here's the thing: Do you think people are gonna like? Would people do like who? What kind of artist? Like, Kate Michelle's not that popular. I mean, she's relatively popular, but you either have to be really niche where you have like a hardcore fan base that would do that, or you just got to be like Beyonce, right? Where it's just like, okay, someone needs to listen to my music so bad that they'll sign up for this. But like anything in the middle. Like who you like? Who do you listen to, old man? What's your What's your rappers? What do you What's your go to now? Well, Uzi uh, Vert. So uh, R.I.P. But like usually, if I have to, if someone says, "Oh, pick me something," it's usually going to be Mad Villain or um, Feral March. So if if either of those were like, all right, our music's not going to be on Spotify no more. It's not going to be on Title. It's not going to be on Apple Music. The only way you can listen to it is you got to pay me fifteen dollars a month on OnlyFans. Would you do it? There isn't an artist in the world that's going to make me do that. <laughs> the reason I say, and the only reason I say it like that is specifically because it's going to take more than one artist to do this. It's one of the reasons why I, did, I never signed up for title because I was like, I don't know. I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? I love Jay. Like, he's one of my favorites, but it's like, you don't have, you're not giving me enough for me to give a shit about, you know what I mean? Like, also, all his music is on Apple still. Yeah. <laughs> So it was like, okay. And I was like, oh, it's funny. For a while, it wasn't. And I just waited it out. And then mm-hmm. eventually, it was back on there. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm cool. Like, you know what I mean? I, like I said, I don't care enough. That's, I'm cool. Like, I can wait. But yeah, but that's to your point. That does make a lot of sense. But then it's just a matter of, I think, payment. Because I think you could get a lot of independent artists who may go there just because it's like, you know what? If they're going to give me a higher percentage of what I'm going to make, then why wouldn't I go to all these mm-hmm. If I don't have to go through all, because um, as we've seen in the last shit, 10 years, it's a lot easier to put out music. Mm-hmm. And then if you get the people who are just kind of like, hey, I can, because I'm not all, only all of OnlyFans isn't pay per view. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people out there who are just kind of like, hey, here, here are my titties and they're free. But if you want to actually see like the uh, a more mature or explicit content, you got to pay for that. Or even mm-hmm. if it's for private forums and things like that. Because OnlyFans essentially, that's OnlyFans essentially Patreon. There's really no yes. difference. Yep. So, so fucking. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure. And that, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but I think people, I think people, I get the arguments for it and against it. But I think there's a couple of things that people, I think, miss out in this argument. And um, I think it's pretty relevant because a lot of um, more established, like, uh, Organizations that focus specifically on adult content, like um, uh, Pornhub, for instance, right? They they had to scrub like a large portion of their content mm-hmm. because it, it it was it was pressure from the from the merchant accounts, right? But it was it was it was it was appropriate pressure because there were a number of 
incidents where people were actually being exploited on those platforms, right? And I think um, OnlyFans is definitely a place where people can be exploited, right? Like there are still pimps, right? Like shit still still kind of shady in, in, in the sex work industry. Absolutely. So I think that um, what, what even though investors go to OnlyFans and they go like, oh, you're making all this money on adult content, but I invest. And what happens if there's a big scandal, right? What happens if the majority of this adult content is based on exploitation and we have to shut it down or OnlyFans get sued, they're liable for all this stuff. So, I mean, it's, 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 I think it's more complex than that. I think that, I think what what's appealing to OnlyFans is that it's a platform that has a proven way for content creators to make money off of their content, right? And for mm-hmm. investors to make money off of that. And say somebody like Kay Michelle, she might not be a Beyonce, but she doesn't need, you know, 8 million people to sign up for $50 a month. She gets 10,000 people to sign up $50 a month. That's 150 mm-hmm. grand a month, right? So even, again, it's, it's about the percentages here. Um, if a stream artist gets cents, like less than a cent, on the dollar for each stream, where in OnlyFans, you know, it's 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 or, order of magnitude's larger cut, right? I think I don't know what the percentage is, but it's like like a like a million times more than than what they're getting off of an individual stream. So I don't know. I, I'm 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 interested to see interested to see where this goes, right? Because I think a lot of these moves, especially if you're a content creator, right? Like you really pay attention to what's happening here because it's definitely going to possibly move the industry one way or the other. And that's going to affect if you're, if you're making money off of content creation, like, you know, definitely pay attention to what's happening. Absolutely. So I'm going to read the, the email and Brandon, you can let me know how factual this is as we go on. The email says, dear OnlyFans creator, this email to notify you of the changes to our acceptable use policy that will go live October 1st, 2021. The new policy will prohibit the posting of any co- new content containing sexually explicit conduct. Content containing nudity will be uh, it will continue to be allowed as long as it is consistent with the policy. Existing content uh, content that does not meet the standards of the new policy will be need to be removed by December first, twenty twenty one. Our intention is for the policy to be implemented in accordance to the above date, but we need to make we need to change one or more of our dates as circumstances may require. So I'm gonna pause right there just for a second. The wording on this is janky as hell, but we all know how lawyers, like, you know, when you're saying certain things, mm-hmm. how uh, words can be used against you. And so it goes, existing content that does not meet our standard. So they can essentially decide what is and isn't, is and is not the standard. And it could mm-hmm. like you could have someone like, let's take, um, let's take both our, both our shows, for example. They could one day go, you know what? Hey, uh, Brandon, your stuff does not need the content anymore. And you can go, what are you talking about? Old man, what the, old man Wade says the exact same thing. Yeah, but he says it um, in a more humorous way. And you can be like, well, that's subjective. Well, no, that's our content. That's our that's our rule and all that. And things like that get very janky. And, yep. and, and it's, it's janky for a reason. I mean, again, like, Pay attention, paying attention to actually what's happening in this sector, right? So for the longest time, these platforms were protected by a law that stated that they weren't necessarily responsible for the content that people put on their platforms, right? Like, and that, and that protected Facebook, Twitter, a lot of these platforms. But that law has been under a lot of scrutiny and most likely will change. Um, uh, you know, it, it's most likely going to change, right? It, yeah. So, con- so it's not even just the content creators, but the people that have these that own and 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 and, and have these platforms, they need to be more um, more careful in, in, with what people put on these platforms because they will be held responsible. So, I have no issue with OnlyFans making these, even if it's subjective, even if it's arbitrary. Like, yo. They're making a decision to protect their bottom line, which I mean, I don't know. As a capital capitalist, I don't know. I, I think well, they're already making. Yeah. You got to get verified. So essentially, like, you have to verify that yourself is real, right? But if you do any content with another person, that person also must have an OnlyFans account and must be verified. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're a husband and wife couple that's doing stuff on there, it can't just be the wife's account. Like your the husband has to get an account and that person has to be verified and has to be tagged in the videos that the two of them are in together. 
Yeah. Uh, so they're starting to do those types of things to make sure, and that's kind of what Pornhub did, right? So like if mm-hmm. you go on Pornhub now, like every account that you see is verified because you have to go through a verification process because of what Javi said. It was a lot of it was to, it was mostly two things. It was some underage pornography, and then the other thing was like revenge porn type. Like mm-hmm. people were recording people. When, oh, just for the records, fuck y'all. If y'all are doing that nasty shit, you can go fuck yourself. That's well, it mean. wasn't like, I mean, not revenge porn in the sense like they were secretly recording each other. It was mostly like there was no way to verify that both parties knew that okay. the recorded video was being put online. Yeah. So like in, in a lot of the cases, the both people involved or the people involved knew that they were being recorded, but Pornhub couldn't verify that both people Consent. agreed to put that video on the internet. That type of thing. Um, and people that advocate for legalizing sex work, which I, I agree with. I think that it should be legalized and, and, and regulated. These are the type of things you're going to have to deal with, with a regulated, with a regulated industry. Well, yeah, but they already have, you know, all you got to do is look at different co- different countries in Europe to see how they do that. Yeah. Like, it's very, it's under a lot of scrutiny in Europe, a lot of these places, right? Like, yeah, like, but they also have significantly less sexual assaults involving sex workers. Mm-hmm. They have significantly less things like that because, you know, those people have, they basically have like union cards. Like yeah. you can pay, you pay taxes on sex uh, at work. Like, so it's kind of hard. Like now it's, it's so backdoor that people take advantage of sex workers because the sec- they're like, well, you're not going to go tell the cops because you're doing some fuck shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Definitely. when it's legal, it's like, <laughs> yeah, if you do some fuck shit to me, I'm going to go tell the fucking police. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna go tell the cops you're gonna be in trouble, and so it's it it needs to be legalized. Oh yeah, for sure. It's the same, and it's also the same premise of marijuana, where it's like <clears throat> people are gonna do this shit anyway, and the amount of harm that it causes is is would be less when it's um, legalized. And it's another one of those things in America that's really stupid. When America claims to be like this complete, like utter, unadmitted, like unabashed capitalist country. But yet they do these things that cost themselves money. Like if America made, if if the federal government made marijuana legal and put like a twenty percent tax on it, people are going to still go buy that legal marijuana because they don't want to. Because the whole thing of putting tax, making it legal, is if you're selling it illegally, it's not just possession. Now it's tax evasion, which is scary. And There's so, a twenty percent tax on weed in Massachusetts, and it sucks. Yeah. You just slap a 20% tax <laughs> on it. People are going to buy it and you're going to generate so much money for your state, for the states through that tax. It's, it's, the, same, it's the same thing that happened with liquor. And it's the same. They tax cigarettes to a point where, well, the thing with cigarettes was that it's been a 20 year campaign of telling people, hey man, this shit is bad for you and ostracizing smokers from everyday society, which we doesn't really have that connotation. Like, if you like people who smoke weed, they kind of talk about it joyfully, like in general now, like, you know, you still have those old school people, you know, whatever. But most people is kind of like this joyful, like, you know, oh, look, look at that person. He's high. <laughs> but yeah. smokers, it's like, hey, man, what are you doing? Like, don't smoke in my fucking house. Don't smoke around me. What are yeah, you doing? Yeah. Matter of fact, don't even smoke in front of the, the entrance of the building. Yo. Go yeah. You got to be at least like a corner outside, open. bro. <laughs> a hundred feet off the property to do stuff like yeah, that. Facts. In Atlanta, they have a smoking room, right? In Atlanta airport, like, it's so weird. If you go to Atlanta airport, they have, like, this glass room where that's the only place you can smoke in the airport. And so all these fucking smoking people are piled up in, like, this 10 by 10 room just smoking cigarettes. And it's, and the people walk by with such disgust. Look at those people. <laughs> <laughs> and we and so and like new york did the opposite right so like the law in new york for smoking weed now is not only is weed legal but you can smoke weed anywhere that you can smoke a cigarette so like if you're out in the park or you know you know wherever it's legal to smoke weed i mean smoke a cigarette now you can just smoke weed there which is kind I of like, once once weed became because in massachusetts before weed became actually legalized it was actually it was decriminalized for a number of years mm-hmm. before they made it officially legal and honestly even though there there's still rules about like smoking weed outdoors or public places you come to massive you come to massachusetts on a, you come to boston on the right day and you drive down any any major street with your windows down you know, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a whiff people are smoking <laughs> everywhere 
Yeah, you are. People, and I, I, I love it. <laughs> and you know, and again, like just uh, just the idea of people like like my wife, um, it helps her a lot. So beyond the idea of like the recreational uh, positives that go with it, just the idea of being able to make your body feel a little bit better, or you know, just things like that. That's a a major benefit that people are missing in this. And it's like, well, why should we? I'm like, I'm like, do you understand the concept of like how good it makes people feel? You know what else makes people? Um, you know what else makes people feel good? I'm a sex, sex, legalized sex work. Damn it! <laughs> look, yeah. how, look at that! Look at how we tied it back to the original topic. <laughs> a professional, professional you know, podcaster, right there. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm the co-pilot for a reason. <laughs> still, a reason the show's still going. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to the idea of, but um, back to like the topic at hand. Uh, you, all you guys bring up a really good point, especially the idea of the fact that, uh, as Harvey said, there are still things. There are still people who are going to force people to do things like that that they don't want to do. So the idea itself isn't bad. I don't think the idea of... Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think the idea of adding restrictions to the things that um, are going to be on OnlyFans are bad. I don't think that's bad at all. My concern is the hypocrisy of everything that's going on in between. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And how they determine what's, you know, for which person what is accepted and what's not. So if everything works out smoothly, then like, you know, cool, I'm all for it. But if it doesn't work out that way, then like, you know, then, it, then um, we have other issues. But mm-hmm. on the flip side of things, this opens up this opens up a new avenue for sex workers. In a sense, there we'll pull a Thanos thing and go, fine, I'll do it myself. Because I've seen a lot of uh, porn stars who will just be like, fuck it, I'm going to do this my way since you're not going to let me do it how I want to. Uh, let's take Riley Lee, for example. Riley Lee opened up her own, <clears throat> her own porn company, her own, um, not porn company, her own sex work agency. Oh, wow. Where she, where she, pretty, where she goes in and but she brings certain, like she um, finds a way to promote them and things they do. Now, it could just be a modeling agency, but I know for what I've seen on Instagram, most of them are sex workers. So when, so, you know, to, for the lack of a better term, like, you know, nature finds a way. Mm-hmm. 100%. Right, so, like, so. Now I'm imagining like a Jurassic Park scenario where a bunch of sex workers are just broke out and they're like attacking the tourists and like like a I'm bunch fucked. of velociraptors in high heels. I mean, getting fucked to death. What a way to go! <laughs> yo, that's yo, that's on my bucket list. Oh man, but yeah. So yeah, I think I um I, I appreciate you guys for actually like you know I'm glad I didn't just do this on my own because you guys enlightened me to some things that I actually didn't know about. So shout out to y'all. Except Brandon, you can go fuck yourself. Uh, <laughs> Don't so, kink shame. Don't kink shame. Um, uh, absolutely never kink shame. Get to my topic. So you want to get to it now? Yes. All right. So uh, I asked a friend, of, uh, sh- uh, shout out to um, my, the homie side. I Because I was like, hey, I need some topics. You know, do you got anything for me? And she hits me up and goes, people's obsession with athletes needing to be humble. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just going to leave it there. Brandon, take the wheel. So a lot of this comes from what happened with Shakari Richardson uh, yesterday. And, you know, I am someone that was a pretty decent athlete. Like I played Division One football. I was a, uh, I played AAU basketball at a high level. Um, and so, uh, sports has been a big part of my life and still is as far as enjoyment and then for a lot of my life you know helped pay for college a bunch of different things like that um here's the thing man when it like shikari went through a lot of bullshit with the olympics right that didn't need to happen and shouldn't have happened. well it, it was a lot of fuck shit with that um and then it was a lot of projecting with that as well which is kind of what we see a lot on the internet it's like people put themselves in the situation when that's not you right and so for better or for worse 
um, because and then we lump a lot of things in because the Olympics was absolutely like fucking like with black women. But the what happened with Shakari Richardson wasn't the same as those other ones, right? But it all kind of gets lumped in together uh, in those types of things. And so she became somewhat of like a polarized figure, right? So she's like this figure that is kind of polarizing. And so, and plus she's got like the look, like she's got like this cool look and she's got the hair and she's got the nails and she's got the bravado and the confidence, right? And she's talking shit and she's like, you know, I would have won an Olympics. I would, you know, that would have been better or whatever. And so she comes out for her first race after post suspension uh, yesterday or two days ago. I can't remember. And (laughs) she gets fucking smoked. She came in last place. She got a boot smoke. And so, and then some people were just, you know, some people were making jokes and other people were like, this is why you got to be humble. This is, you know, this is why athletes need to be humble. And then other people were like, y'all just wanted to see her downfall. Y'all cheering for her downfall. Like, you know, you hate, you know, you hate any type of person that wants to be successful. She still did good. And here's my thing, right? (laughs) I think that... Can I just say that she literally did not do good. I just want to say that. Right. Well, that's what I was going to say. I think that, and this is not particular to Shikari, this is just in general on social media. Like, I think that, at least for me, social media has helped me become a much, much better person in terms of, like, understanding uh, women issues, understanding other uh, minority or marginalized people issues, like, looking internally on things that I might have done in my past that need to be better and et cetera, et cetera. I However, I also think oh, that. Hold on, I want to stop you right there, only because I think that's a very important uh, point you made that I think needs to be highlighted. Because this one of the things I've also done as well, and like me and Super Wolf have had conversations about this, and I've been looking, I've been asking a lot of people about gender norms and stuff like that, and just like things in the LGBTQ community that I just don't fucking understand. You know what I mean? And because of that, like Twitter has also let me has allowed me to meet a lot of people from different walks of life that I never would meet otherwise. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> some people will call Twitter like one of the worst places in the world. I don't necessarily disagree, but there is a lot of benefit that goes along to it. And to your point, uh, Brandon, I've learned a lot about myself as well. The, thing, mm-hmm. and the things I will or will not tolerate, the things I am and am not okay with. So, mm-hmm. so recently I've just been like, yo, I, I was like, I'm just going to start blocking people that, and I'm just going to start blocking people. But if you're not, adding anything to what I'm what I'm trying to do on Twitter, then why the fuck are you even here to begin with? Yep. So like Joe but, Rogan, I don't he's not on there anymore. Like fuck boy for <laughs> anything anything related to him, I'm cool. Like you know what I mean? So it's but, just but, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Oh no no you're good. Finish. Oh no that was pretty much it. Just uh, I just want to make sure that we highlight the I highlight all of that because I think yeah. that's a super important um, thing to be said because it's social media people talk about social media how like it's like oh it's nothing and like you know what would we do without it it's like yeah I've met a lot of people via social media I met you via social media like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? you're somebody I consider a friend like if shit goes down and I'm having a bad day I can hit you up and be like mm-hmm. yo Brandon look, I, I, need, I need a couple seconds you know what I mean so like super well we, you, um, you've had him on the show during everything with Loki like you two have, not, have developed a relationship and things like that so when people start going on spouting out about how social media isn't like, you know, it's not as good as just like, well, it's, it, it can be shit. It can be very toxic, but that's, you know, everything in life. Social right. media has made me a worse person. Just wanted to put it out there. Seriously? I don't believe I, it. I just want, I just wanted to be, oh. it's opposite <laughs> Sunday today. <laughs> okay. But, but with all that said, uh, one thing that, the social media space that we operate in, like the space where it is like people who are quote unquote woke or quote unquote aware of things, more cognizant of things, uh, you know, those, you know, that type of space that we exist in and that I get learned a lot from. It also a lot of times can take a lot of fun out of things like all the time. And I get on social media and I just see people just constantly complaining and there's a lot of fuck shit in the world to complain about but like sometimes things are funny and so for me it's like yes i understand the complex issues of black women in sports and in in the world in general i understand what happened with shikari richardson with the olympics i'm I'm aware of all those things and i'm cognizant of all those things but are we really at a point 
where someone who talked cash shit comes in last place in the race and we can't clown that person like like that's funny like that's objectively funny to me like it would be no different than if uh when lebron james was like we're not gonna win one or two or three or four or five or six or seven championships and in that first year he came out and got fucking and lost to the dallas mavericks people clown his ass because he should have been clowned because mm-hmm. you talked cash shit. Now, that's the price you pay. That's the price you pay for confidence. That's why confidence is such something that can be admired because you put yourself yes. out there. You, yes. you take that risk that yo, you're gonna look stupid. And if you and if you and if you accomplish what you said you're gonna accomplish, yo, it makes you look even better. But that's the price you play. I, like I, I, you know, I'm very close to a lot of Jamaicans. I have a lot of friends on Facebook that are Jamaicans, and trust me, they ha- they're having no issues yes. <laughs> talking <laughs> shit. Yo, it's crazy. And I love Shikari. Yo, I love her. Like, yo, she, yo, she's dope. She's dope. She's dope. She's dope. But like you say, like she talked. She 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 had a she big mouth going in, which is fine. Like you you're confident in your abilities, but you got like you, you got smoke. It is what it is. And I don't think she's crying. She ain't crying about it. She sound kind of hurt during that interview, but she can out here crying yeah, about it. Yeah, she was it. a little salty, but yeah, you know, that's what happens yeah, when you come in last is. place. Yeah, that's what it is. But the thing is, like, do people go too far? Yes, of course, some people go too far. Oh, but yeah. I think there's this other thing that we do, and I heard Bomani Jones talking about this, is that we amplify, like, voices that are idiots, and yeah. then we project that voice on, like, we we make it seem bigger than there is, right? So like somebody will come out and say something fucked up, and then we'll be like, "See, folks out here, this is what they think. This is fucked up." And it's like, if like I've seen this happen many times, and I'll do like a Twitter search, right, on like whatever the topic is, and it'll just be like a bunch of eggs and people with like twenty followers saying shit, and it's not even that much. And then a couple people retweet the same, or they retweet the same tweet over and over again. So it's like the same tweet quote tweeted or retweeted all over and over and over and over and over and over again and then you'll get on twitter and people will be like oh this is what people think these are that's why the world is so fucked up because all these people think this thing and i'm not saying the world's not fucked up and i'm not saying people don't think fucked up things but oftentimes we amplify the voices of loud minority stupid people when pierce morgan says something clearly fucked up about naomi osaka yes there's other people who think like pierce morgan but i went on the internet I went on Twitter during that everything with Naomi Osaka and it was overwhelmingly people supporting her mm-hmm. then that were like saying, you know, she's a spoiled brat. But yes, those people were there. I'm not saying those people weren't there. And I'm not saying there's a lot of people who didn't say anything on social media that don't believe that. But this idea that, that then that becomes the prevailing thought, right? That becomes the prevailing thought of their social media. The so, social media is killing Naomi Osaka because Osaka because of this, that, and the other. And yes, people were on there, but there was also like way more people who were like, yeah, man, people need mental health breaks. Like this, like people go through shit yeah. and you need to support them through this shit. And this shit is real. Like that, like I saw maybe it's maybe it's my algorithm. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and say that it's not. Maybe it's the algorithm of how my Twitter is because of the people that I follow. But I did a search on Twitter. I didn't just look at my timeline and it was overwhelmingly that thing so I, I, i'll let you go in a second old man but what i was gonna say is like hi Kanye. we we do you don't have the answers old man <laughs> we we some like sometimes we uplift the my the loud minority of people some and sometimes we take fun out of things that sometimes things are just not that serious right like sometimes a, a great at she's still a great athlete yeah. but she came in fucking last place like that's fucking funny like, i don't know what you want me to say that's but, funny to me so i so two things i agree with one part of it when you say okay i will we um, did an episode yesterday uh, for ccbn and i just went on a long tirade about how i don't give a shit about the eternals i'm so gonna about go- who the Eternals, the, the movie, okay. like I don't give a shit, like you know what I mean. I don't, but I'm still, but I also said that I'm still going to see it. Now, if I go see this, now if I go see now when I when I eventually watch the trailer, and if I go back and retract all the things that I said, like 
I should justifiably be flamed for that because I sound like a fucking idiot. Like, you know what I mean? Like, those are just the things you do. Or, or you weren't excited because that first trailer was boring as fuck, and then you actually saw a good trailer, and you were like, now I'm excited. That's not hypocritical. That's adjusting to the information that was given to you. Yeah. But even then, like, so, but let's, and let's get, let's get back to being an athlete. So I was not, I was nowhere near the athlete you are. I was, I played high school basketball. I played in the, um, it was some random league in Boston. Um, it doesn't even matter. But I wasn't the athlete that a lot of people were. I, I did what I did really well. But trust and believe, when I went up against the best of the best, I, my game came out. And so when they would talk a gang of shit and I was fucking roasting them or, or I was like just killing them, yeah, I talked a gang of shit. You want to know why? Because you ran up and made your mouth about how great you were. So now if in fact though, the wheels have been, t- um, the shoes on the other foot and now you're going now you're gonna to catch these jokes. It's just how it is. So I also want to point out something else you said, something Super Bowl brought up during the Super Bowl with Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. We started talking about how everybody was talking about, like, you know, oh, I can't believe they did this and da 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 And Super Bowl brought up a really good point. Are there people really out there doing this? Or is it just one person who kind of just runs with it or one person said something and now Twitter's kind of like, this is the hot topic that's going to get us people who are going to, like, listen and, you know, tune into stuff like that. And a lot of times it's the latter. So what I started doing after the conversation I had with Super Bowl, because I understand how things work, and how sometimes you can be wrong, I started going specifically to the Twitter cert, typing in a name, and then seeing what's being said. Mm-hmm. And I'll spend a good amount of time looking looking through it because it's like, you know, I may miss a thing or two. But I'm also not going to go so deep into things where it gets toxic and it's like going to affect my mental health. I'm cool on that. But I also try to do my best to do my research or also have people on here who may have a different opinion or more education to a certain subject. And I think that comes with a lot of the problems with that. That being said, the one thing I will, under, I do understand is how well sometimes they'll go like, you know, why, are they, why is it specifically a thing where it feels like they're just getting on uh, women of color? Like, and as you pointed out, that is absolutely a thing. That's just, that's, that's just a fact. That's not a, that's not an opinion that actually happens to black women all the damn time or women of color all the damn time. Yeah, women in general. Um, but you're going to have to get them jokes. <laughs> well, in this case, it's just, it's not that, like, it's just, a, I mean, she just came in last place. Like, to me, this isn't that serious at all. Like, the Naomi Osaka thing was way more serious. So, like, no, well, I wasn't I'll, upset I'll, at people who were concerned about that. My only point with that was to say that the perception of what happened if was not actually what happened. But a lot of that is due to trauma, right? Like we all face that trauma. Like and people and, and women of color face it, but particularly black women face it much more than I do. So like, but I know I get that same thing. Like, like with wrestling, right? I watch wrestling as a black wrestling fan and I get upset at things, right? But if I look at sometimes it's valid. And then other times it may not be valid. It may just be that that person was should have, you know, just got lost. It wasn't anything racially involved in it. But because I've seen so much racist fuck shit in wrestling for 30 years, I immediately go to, that's some racist fuck shit, right? Yeah, like and the so, thing you already know, like, like oh, God, I can't wait to talk about this. Like, sometimes the fix is just in. Like, yeah. you know, it, it is what it is. And the Naomi Osaka thing is, was, I thought, the way people treated her was just disgusting in general. Because it wasn't just, and it's funny, it wasn't the people on Twitter, because I've noticed a lot of people on Twitter were supporting her. They were like, hey, you know, we're with you. This happened. Like, you know, like, this is, like, and a lot of people understood where he's coming from. A lot of the nasty fuck shit came from the quote-unquote professionals in the uh, media, in the people in um, on Fox News, you know, but, you know, Fox News got a Fox News. And right. just and discussing about, like, oh, like, you, oh, what was it? I forget what this bitch said. But she was just like, oh, you can perform in front of thousands of people and millions around the world, but, like, you know, but you let an interviewer rattle you. I'm like, I don't think you understand how anxiety works. Like, right. You know I mean? like, but we also have to understand those people have an angle, right? They're, they're playing an angle. They're doing that on purpose. And this, this is and this is not just the same thing for Naomi Saka, but it's with 
a, a whole lot of things regarding race, gender, uh, sexual orientation, like it, it, all of that. It's like these people are playing to that, right? And so when we amplify them, like one of the things like Bomani was saying was like, stop quote tweeting these people. Like, stop spreading their tweets because that's the whole. Like, when Megan, when Megan Kelly says some fuck shit about Megan uh, Naomi Osaka, she's doing that. She knows it's fuck shit, and she's doing that so people can quote unquote dunk on her. But they're not. But by dunking on her, all you're doing is spreading that, spreading that, spreading that, and then it's 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 making that the prevailing thought on the situation, right? And this is not to say that people don't think that on their own, but we do this all we do this yeah we do this all this this happens all the time with you know with police violence right or or uh in, in sports in, in 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 anything like every week is something like this it hurts and it hurts your cause i think and so i i i say this to people all the time like people think that i'm constantly on facebook arguing with people but i'm not like when i when i am on facebook and i am having conversations with people, it gets kind of crazy. So that's probably why it seems like I'm on there all the time, but I'm not. I avoid it. And I avoid it not just because of people I dis disagree with wholeheartedly. It's also people that I kind of agree with um, that kind of turn me off from these issues. Because again, they, they, one, they obsess over things that may not be important to that cause, right? Um, and two, they often talk about these things with a lack of information, lack of context, lack of education about the subject matter, right? And what ends up happening is that you weaken your argument, you weaken your argument because you can say you you can say things. I I, don't, I can't even think of any examples right now, but you can say something um, or share something out of out of out of like the best intentions, the best intentions, but it's either wrong or it's over exaggerated. And once it comes out that I was wrong or over exaggerated, the people that you're trying to 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 come to your side aren't going to trust you, right? Yep. It's going to motivate them to not believe you and not take you seriously. And then, like nothing, nothing of importance happens at that point. And it, it's yep. it's 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 at looking because I, I I see myself as an outsider looking in at a lot of these things. I really don't care about the discussion on social media. But looking in, it's just it's just it's 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 really disappointing because it's like there's a lot of stuff that that's important that needs to change in, in our society. Um, the way we treat certain people, the way we treat our women, our men, our 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 our, our um, vulnerable societies, ourselves, and it's just like yo, it's it's, it's a never ending cycle of just stupid ass arguments. But even more than that, and I'm guilty of this, so this is not sitting myself outside of the conversation. Because this is kind of hard, like it's kind of impossible not to be guilty of this as someone in a marginalized group in this country. But we also like make things about ourselves. Like we put like we 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 see a situation that reminds us of something that happened to us or that could happen to us. And so then we then take ourselves and we project upon the situation, right? And so then we're all that person. Like, oh, I'm that person. Mm -hmm. Because this thing that's kind of remotely similar to it happened to me so that must be exactly how this situation is going and so now i'm going to react as such and i'm definitely guilty of that and we're all i mean Absolutely. that's part of the trauma of living in the country in a patriarchy racist white supremacist country like if you fall in any of those groups that are being pushed down upon like that's just kind of how that's going to work with your mindset. So, but I think it's something that we need to be more aware of because every situation that we see, it it's not all the same, right? And so it's not all just tied in that one box. So I know we're going to get to this, but like on wrestling last night, some real fuck shit happened to Bianca right. Belair. Right. Like, that. Like I absolutely believe that that is racially motivated. Uh, it's way too similar to some other shit that happened with black characters in wrestling, but it's entirely possible that it's not right. It's an, it's entirely possible that it's just incompetence by a company, and not to get into re to inside wrestling, but by a company that does a lot of incompetent wrestling storytelling and booking with all these characters. So it's entirely possible that it's incompetent. However, I believe with all my heart 
that if Bianca Belair wasn't black, that that wouldn't have happened, right? And there's nothing that anybody can tell me that would say that that's not the case. Even though I can take a step back and use my logical brain and say it's entirely possible that it's just an incompetent company doing incompetent storytelling that they do all the fucking time, right? And so it's, but I don't believe that. In my mind, I believe that if she was white, that shit wouldn't have happened. That's what I personally believe. Yeah. But well, I know, I know people. I know people are gonna say this is hypocritical, especially based on what I said earlier. But yo, this is again based on an educated, informed thought, right? Um, based on literally studying the history of this country, right? Or just you know being black in this country. I tend to default to things being motivated by race. Yes, just like you do. And honestly, if if, if we're going to be 100 percent, I know there's going to be some red hat wearing people that are going to hate this, but I don't give a shit. Like this is a racist country. Things that whole our whole society was based on a racist hierarchy. So even if you're not doing things based on race, usually that's the subtext. It's usually even subconsciously subconscious bias is a real thing so yeah I, I don't knock you for thinking that if she was not a black woman that it would probably i don't know what's happening I, I don't even know what's happening but i can tell you that there's a good chance a subconscious bias when it comes to race it's probably why whatever happened that you're upset about happened and even if it wasn't purpose purposely done it probably did happen because that's what the mm-hmm. society is built on and that's an informed that's an informed way of looking at the world you know people talk about critical race theory that's what critical race theory is right and so whatever i i i i, I separate racial issues from the other stupidity on, on on facebook because you know what nine times out of ten it's probably a correct assessment yeah well it's the same thing with patriarchy it's the same thing with all those we made it our yeah. mission to help change the world trying, in health our imaging course, expertise and I, AI I, technology aims to help like- die a fucking loud ass fucking thing or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with all those types of things. And oh, so yeah, facts, that's yeah. why I say I am totally guilty of it and I completely understand it. But what I've been trying to do more is like trying to think critically of things because it I think that it can help situations in certain in certain cases. And then ultimately a lot of times you just find out, oh yeah, you know, it's exactly what I thought it was. This person mm-hmm. was sexist, this person was misogynistic, this person was homophobic. This decision was racist. Like it's oftentimes those things, but I think that I think it would benefit to 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 think about those things sometimes, right? And so, even if your ultimate conclusion, like mine's with Bianca Belair, is I still think it was fucking racist, even after. But I did take a second to think. Well, this is a fucking stupid ass booking company. They do make a bunch of stupid ass booking decisions. Well- so let's let's get right into it because this is a this is a topic I really wanted to get into. But you also have to look at something else, and this was one of the reasons this topic was on the docket to begin with. I went and did I went and I didn't watch SummerSlam. I usually watch it with my best friend. He wasn't a, he was a, we were out having um fun with um some friends last night, so I didn't get to it. But I kept up on things that happened, and I saw that Becky Lynch came back, and I said I was like, yo, the fix was in as soon as Bailey got hurt. I saw where they were going with this. So anyway. But that wasn't the part that really got me. The part that really disturbed me was when I woke up this morning and I saw Kofi Kingston trending. And I was like, oh shit, did he get hurt? And then it was just everybody on Twitter reminding the world that the same thing that happened to Bianca Belair happened to Kofi Kingston. They bring in somebody we haven't seen in a while. Uh, Brock Lesnar won Money in the Bank, which he shouldn't have won to begin with fuck around and beat Kofi Kingston in less than shit. What was it like? But his was like two seconds. But yeah. the thing, and the thing is, it's not about beating them. Like, it makes oh, sense that oh, if Becky oh, oh, Lynch... Oh, 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 let, let me, I'm okay. gonna break it down. I'm gonna break it down for him. Kofi Kingston lost him in less than two seconds. Fine. Brock Lesnar, he's a fucking monster in the grand scheme of things. Should Kofi be able to, to take somebody like that? Probably not. But the fact of the matter is, this is wrestling. It's it's the prestige. It's, it's like, you know what I mean? It's magic. We're, we're not supposed to believe this stuff because, you know, it's fake. We're like, we had a six foot um, 10 dead guy who was like doing shit that no human being should be able to do. So don't, so when people go, oh, well, he shouldn't have won. I'm like, yeah, don't feed me that. Don't feed me the bullshit 
of um, reality when it comes to wrestling because you're gonna you're gonna sound like a fucking idiot and you're gonna be wrong regardless. So, but then it was like so. Black Twitter brought up the idea that yes, I said Black Twitter uh, brought up the idea that like yo, the same shit happened to Kobe Kingston. What the fuck are they doing? Like you know, with their with their with their um with the talent and Bianca Belair was fucking over. Everybody loved her. Like she was she was like literally the success story of the year. But we saw what happened, Brandon. Take the wheel. You there, Brandon? Can you froze. I think you got an internet issue. Sorry, I was yeah. muted. Oh, yep. Yeah. Well, awesome. I'll see. So basically what happened at SummerSlam was Bianca Belair, um, Becky Lynch, who's like everyone's favorite of wrestler, came back and beat Bianca Belair in less than a few seconds. Oh, there you go. She's back. Brandon. All right. So yeah, Brandon, break down what happened. So like, t- tell everybody from your perspective what happened and what actually happened. Right. So it's a little bit more detailed than that. So basically what happened was this was not the plan originally. So she was supposed to face Sasha Banks. That was supposed to be a big match. Sasha Banks, who's a known anti-vaxxer, um, one of those people who don't believe in the vaccine, the room, it's not been confirmed, but it's pretty much hinted that she got COVID or she was around some people with COVID. And so that's why she couldn't be in the match, right? And so they were supposed to just have a burglar match, but they found out eight days ago, this is what I was reading by reporters, they found out eight days ago that Sasha wasn't going to be cleared to wrestle yesterday. So instead of telling the story, and this is where I go to like it's incompetent, it's part of it's an incompetent company. Instead of telling the story like at that point saying, hey, make a fake injury. Sasha got injured working out. She's not, you know, it's fake. Sasha got injury working out, you know, she's not gonna be able to make the show, but Bianca's gonna face a mystery opponent on Sunday, right? Or something like that. Or, you know, whatever the fuck. And then she gets to Sunday and Becky Lynch shows up. Who's been, who's been, who is a big star. She is, she's a bigger star, if we're being honest, than Bianca. She's a bigger star than Bianca is currently. Uh, you missed, um, you mispronounced overrated, but go ahead. Well, you think she's overrated. Overrated is, in wrestling, is how big of a star you are. And she's a big star. That's, that's true. I'm, I'm, but I'm still going to stay up with And list. she's been gone for over a year. She's had a baby. And so she comes back. And you know she's a big star because the reaction she got was absurd. She got an insane reaction. Um, And here's the thing. When a good guy, a very popular person, like CM Punk and the other company, comes back, that good person usually should win the match, even in this situation. I would have been okay with Becky Lynch winning the match. But it wasn't how. It's how you win the match, right? It's how you tell that story, right? It's how you tell. Now. Some people are saying like, well, she's still, you know, she's still recovering from giving birth and she's not fully ready to go in. You know, she hasn't had any ring time. This is all last minute. So she's not ready to have a match. So why does she have she's a match? not ready to have a match. Then you don't have a match. Do an angle. Have Carmella. They had Carmella. So I don't know if you saw what happened, but they had Carmella. They, the announcer goes, Sasha Banks is not. First of all, the company showed a video of the Sasha and, and Bianca feud like the match was actually going to happen. And then Bianca does her interest and everybody's waiting for Sasha's interest. And then the announcer goes, Sasha Banks is not clear to perform tonight. So the match is going to be between Bianca Belair and the most beautiful woman in the world, Carmella, right? And so Carmella <laughs> comes out, she's supposed to be the heel, right? So this is, okay, this is pro wrestling shit. No, no, no I'm, saying like, I'm, I'm just saying like the booze ensued, I'm assuming, right after that. Yeah, right. So she comes out. And they do the whole thing, like, you know, on this corner, you know, from such and such, Carmella, and, you know, do the whole inter- introductions or whatever for the women's championship match. And then, uh, and then Becky Lynch music hits and the place goes fucking insane. Like, ups- she comes out and she, you know, people haven't seen her in over a year. She's a huge star. They're going fucking batshit. She's walking down the aisle. She comes down the aisle. She steps in the ring. She goes, hold on one second. Beats the shit out of Carmella, right? So she throws Carmella outside, stomps her, throws her into the steps, like beats the shit out of her, gets in the ring and says, 
Who wants to see the man take on Bianca Belair for the women's championship and tear the roof off the place? The fucking fans are going insane. Because, yes, everybody wants to see Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch have a fucking great match, right? And yeah. then they shake hands. Be- Becky fucking cheap shots her. So they're shaking hands. While they're shaking hands, she grabs her and gives her like a rock bottom and pins her in like four seconds. That's how it worked out, right? And that's why everybody was like, this is bullshit, which it was bullshit. The thing is, okay, this is where I go. Yeah, obviously, I think there's some race involved in this because it's some, It's not exactly like Kofi because the most egregious thing with Kofi, it was not even him getting beat so fast, which was bad, but that wasn't even the thing because I remember – I'd rather get beat in 10 seconds than like what happened with John Cena where Brock <laughs> Lesnar just destroyed him for fucking 10 minutes and he never got one punch in. So but, can, I, can I just say to your point, I agree with that, but we've also seen that Brock Lesnar can sell for people smaller than him. Like he made, he made everyone believe that AJ Styles on one occasion, yeah. you now Daniel Bryan on another occasion could beat him. So this right. could have been a situation where Brock Lesnar made him look fantastic. But even that, that's not even my point. Like, if you want to squash him, like, go, like you can do squash matches. That's That can work. The problem, the racist thing and the fucked up thing with Kofi was, <laughs> yeah, I know he doing. never got a fucking rematch, and the next week he just moved on. It was like, oh, fuck. Brock Lesnar beat me. Now I'm back to being in the tag team. No more WWE championship shit with me. Like, that shit never, he's back to making jokes and throwing pancakes. Like, none of that shit ever happened, right? And so at least we know, like, that's, they're not going to do that with Bianca. Like, she's going to get a rematch and shit like that. But, but, I, I, wouldn't, I would not put it past them. Oh, no, I'm, I'm 100% sure about that. But that's not the point. The point is, if Becky Lynch can't, like, let's think about this logically, right? If Becky Lynch can't do a full match because, you know, this was not planned. Because obviously this was not planned. This was a last-minute thing. If she can't do a full match, then do a fucking angle. Have her come out there. Have Carmella and some other girl jump Bianca, you know, whatever. Becky Lynch comes out there. The place goes crazy. They clear the ring together and they hold each other's hand up and say, oh, she goes, the man is back and I'm coming for your belt. Great. The fucking people would love that shit. Bianca's still champion. You get what you want. If you eventually want Becky to wrestle Bianca in a month when she's ready and beat her, fine. Then you have a month to build up the match. They have a great match. The fans get what they want. Bianca's treated with respect, et cetera. But that's not what happened. And that's and so the part of me is going, if she was white, would they still, would they do something like that? Yes, they would. They would do something like that. But would they do it the way they did it? Okay. I don't believe so. So Super Bowl's been on record by whenever I bring up topics like this, he goes, gasp, the WWE did some fuck shit to a black person? <gasps> no, <laughs> and that goes to my point earlier, right? When I go, it's been so much fuck shit towards black people that that's just my default. Anytime a black person is involved, even though my logical brain will tell me that in every single situation, it's probably not racist. Although I believe that in a lot of situations, it is. I know in my mind that every time something I don't like happens to a black person, that every single time, 100%, that it's not racist. I know that in my mind. Like, my logical brain knows that, because obviously, that's not true. However, how do I feel when I watched that shit last night? I was fucking furious. I was pissed watching that shit. I was so angry. And here's the other thing, old man. If they were doing that on purpose to make me mad, then I can, I can even roll with that, right? I can roll with, okay, we're going to piss these fans off by doing some shit that I know is going to piss them off, but we're going to tell an ultimate story where Becky's going to be a bad guy and Bianca's going to get her revenge. And she che- we're going to tell the story that she cheap shot at her and that's how this happened and blah, blah, blah. That was we know next- that's not going to happen. But that was the next thing I was going to say because um, uh, my, my buddy, uh, who I'm pretty sure you see on, on Twitter, um, Lavelle, above average LLP, on um, Twitter, he was talking about, we were talking about a conversation, I think he said something on Twitter wondering whether or not this was an angle to make Becky Lynch look like a heel. But I don't know if... They may run with it, but that's not, that wasn't the plan. <laughs> that's the thing, and it's like, does that really, but I don't know if, like, Becky's Teflon. I don't know if, I don't know if they can do anything to make her a heel. Like, I feel like she could come out next week 
talk big shit about um, Bianca Belair, drag her through the mud, and then they would still cheer for her. Like, she could call the fans idiots, morons, and da-da-da-da, and people are just are still going to, like... But I agree with you, old man, but here's the thing that's with modern wrestling fans. Modern wrestling fans don't boo and cheer based on the characters so much anymore. It's based on, like, real-life shit that you hear about the character, right? Like, everybody... Like, people hate Charlotte because they think that the company favors Charlotte and they give her a bunch of championships belts. But if you, like actually watch charlotte wrestle she's really good at what she does you would think people would like her but they fucking hate her because they think that she always wins right and so th- the same thing that's how becky got over in the first place if you remember becky every, the fans were getting behind her and then they had charlotte beat her and win the championship again no 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 no, no. that the the situation with becky started when um with a um uh, uh, Nia Jax busted her nose. Yeah, like that one, the image of her standing there with a broken nose, throwing her hands up in the air, that is exactly why Becky Lynch became. Yeah, but that's, but, but remember, the people got behind her happened. after that. It was all a happenstance. I'm, I, I honestly and truly believe if she didn't get her nose broken, we wouldn't have the situation that we did. Well, yeah, but I mean, that happens all the time in wrestling. But remember, people got behind her, but then they built up to that big championship match and what they do. They had Charlotte beat her and they made Becky turn heel even though everybody wanted to cheer for her. And when the company tried to turn her into a bad guy, the people were like, fuck you. We <laughs> like her and we fucking hate Charlotte. And they reversed that shit. And Charlotte's playing the good girl, the good guy and Becky's playing the bad guy, but the people are cheering her and they're booing Charlotte, right? Because the fans were like, I don't care what you're showing me on this show. This is how I feel in real life. I think you fucked her over. So we're going to say they happened with Daniel Bryan. If you remember. Yep. That they were they were trying to make him a bad guy. And the people were like, fuck no, I love Daniel Bryan. We want him. I don't care what you do. We want him. And so this is a similar situation that could happen where they are incompetent. This is why I say it's entirely possible that they're incompetent and racist because they <laughs> they think, oh, Becky Lynch is a big star. She comes out to a huge reaction. The people are gonna love her, even if you know, she's gonna beat the champ in two seconds, they're gonna love her. And then the people are like, no, we actually fuck with Bianca and you did her dirty in real life. Like, that's fuck, fucked up. And now we're going to get behind her. And in reality, a lot of this, you know, if it is COVID and it, if it is Sasha getting COVID, I, I, if I'm Bianca, I don't know how I could ever forgive her. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to lie. I don't know how I could ever forgive someone who's the anti-vaxxer, gets COVID, fucks up the biggest moment in my career. And then this, and then the company goes, well, since that happened, we're gonna do this. Yeah. Um so, uh, I know Super Walk, I know like wrestling isn't necessarily your forte, but do you have any um comments on that in general? Vince McMahon hates black people. <laughs> You're not wrong. Thank you, Kanye. <laughs> nah, I don't know. I don't give a shit. Um uh, I was just gonna say, like, I, I I do agree with that last like I, I know. Um, I do agree with that last statement. Um, just in general, like I just I, if somebody fucks up my professional career trajectory because of their own irresponsible behavior, um, yeah, I, I'm, we're fighting. You know, it's on site. I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> you better take that ventilator out of your mouth. Yeah, we fighting. One more wrestling thing, old man. Did you see the CM Punk return? No. That shit was incredible. I've never seen anything like that in wrestling. It was insane. I, I'm, like, I'm sure it was. But um, people were going ape shit. I'm sure they were, and and them going ape shit over CM Punk is justified. But fuck AEW. You still hate? How can you hate AEW? Easily, Jericho. Wait, but he's one person. So the WWE has people worse than Jericho. The Undertaker. I fuck the Undertaker too. I don't watch wrestling, dude. The only reason I will watch wrestling is if I'm watching it with a friend of mine and we're getting and we're watching it together. I don't give a fuck about wrestling, to be honest with you. I, See, like, I think I that's watch. where I differ in certain things. Like I watch I can watch wrestling and be like, this person is trash. This company is trash. Like the NFL. Like I watched, I know the NFL is full of shit, but I, you know, I if if I want to watch football, if I'm into the sport of football, like I did my master's dissertation my master's thesis statement on why college athletes should be paid 
Like oh, my right. entire thing. You won was, that argument, by the way. <laughs> I'm winning it now. But my entire thing was like the NCAA is full of shit and it's basically like indentured servitude. Like it fucking pissed me off. And the NFL for a long time, they're trying to be better now. From what I understand from people that I know that are in it, it's that like Roger Goodell is legitimately trying to make things better, but the owners are fighting against him. And he works for the owners, so ultimately they make the decisions. Um, but the NFL and the NCAA are two fucked up organizations. But if I am a fan of the sport of football, it, do I just deprive myself of something I, I enjoy because – those like I struggle with that because the, where else am I going to watch fucking football? It, it's just it's like the same thing with like any type of entity. Like most big businesses are fucked up, and so at at some point you're making a moral compromise doing almost anything. And so for me, it's like yeah, obviously Jericho's fucking horrible. His wife went to the fucking insurrection. <laughs> like it doesn't oh, get shit. much worse. The young bucks, the young bucks are. Trumpers are like if you read some of the shit that the young bucks used to say. Oh shit! No, so what you said used to say. What you mean by the stuff, the stuff the young bucks will actually um actually said in public? So, but like, super so, froze again. So mm-hmm. my thing with this whole thing with wrestling. It, uh, wait till, um, Harvey, can you give it a pause? I'm gonna wait till it comes back before I make my point. Yeah, I'll just keep recording. Sure. All right. That's fine. I don't. I have a lot of space on my computer. It's your new fancy super duper computer. Yes. Oh, hey. There you go. So, so Brandon. So this is what I was gonna say about that. And, and let me just. And I'm gonna just be honest with it. Anybody who knows me, or anybody who knows who or listens to the show, knows that I'm I'm stubborn when it comes to things like that. I can understand. No. That. Yeah, no. Shocking. <laughs> shocking. The God of stubborn is is the God of stubborn. Yeah, like, I, I know how I am. It's like, there's certain things, it's like, I just can't get by. Then I'm not even going to get past the point, not even going to get into the point of, like, how they treat their um their superstars of color, like, on AEW. But a lot of it has to do with just me being stubborn. It's like, yeah, I'm cool. Like, I can, like, it's not something that, like, I'm not going to say that I am, like, super woke. Like, um, Javi will tell you, like, the super woke thing, a lot of it is a joke. It's satire. Right. Like, I still shop Amazon. And I, and I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm under, and like I said, I'm happy in my in my hypocrisy. I know. Yo, Walmart I, delivers groceries for no extra charge. Okay, that's all I'm I saying. I don't go to fucking Amazon for my food. I go for I get Amazon for my shows and the shit that I. You know, know. what I'm saying people people saying not to shop at Walmart. I'm like, Walmart delivers groceries. <laughs> <laughs> so does those. Shit, why don't I go to the market? Walmart, so you're market. so you're Jim Cornette minus the racism and misogyny, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Like when, I, when you piss Jim Cornette off, there's nothing you can do well, to no. come back. <laughs> um, yes, nah. yes, in a sense, yes. Um, Javi yeah. knows, like when I get stuck in a in a certain situation, like it can take me a while to get out of yeah. it. But you get out of it eventually. Eventually, I will get out of it. But for me, when it the, but there are certain hills that I'm absolutely willing to die on, and one of them is that like I don't need wrestling in my life. I think wrestling's fun. Like WrestleMania for me is a huge event. Me and my best friend, we get together, we watch it. And we laugh, we joke, we drink. We were supposed to get together for SummerSlam tonight, but apparently there's a fucking tropical storm. Mm-hmm. I miss being a wrestling fan. Like when you guys talk about it, I don't know what the hell's going on, but I remember loving wrestling like for so long, like as a kid, younger teenager. And, you know, I, I just remember I mean, it, it wasn't because there was no social media. So we didn't really know yep. exactly what was going on in the lives of like, the, like these wrestlers, but sometimes things would happen. Like, con- like controversies would happen um, as, as a black wrestling fan, even younger, like, you know, it's, it was noticeable how like the champions always kind of looked alike. Um, the heels always looked a certain type of way. Like if you were, a, if you were an ethnic wrestler, for the most part, you were a heel. Um, so like, it, I feel like this has always been a part of wrestling, but at the same time, I don't think it takes, it shouldn't, it'd be unfair to take away something that people enjoy like wrestling as a fan as well as the 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 athletes right that 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 put their bodies on the line constantly right um to bring you something 
that they enjoy doing and, and a lot of people enjoy watching. It's just, again, it's very hard to separate racist, sexist, mis misogynistic fuck shit from anything in this country, right? And if you right. do that, I try to tell people, like, people on Facebook, they're so militantly woke. I'm like, yo, just don't do shit. Don't do anything. Just put yourself in a room with nothing. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to purge all the fuck shit in a way. Like, you, you, you enjoy what you enjoy and fight the good fight at the same time. Man. And don't judge other people for enjoying the stuff they enjoy. Yeah, like, I don't knock, like, I actually don't knock people for watching wrestling. Like, do your yeah. thing. Like, when, Jer when Jericho came out with that fuck shit about um, <laughs> all, all fucking, I don't, and, I, and I remember uh, me and Brandon talked about this. I don't know what we talked about on the show, but we talked about it in, in general. Yeah. When he started, when he became like all lives Jericho, I got rid of every fucking Jericho thing that I own. And I love that my, um, you just made the list hoodie. I threw all that shit away. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, but I do like the opposite of you, right? So for like every Jericho, every Young Bucks, every Undertaker, there's also like Sami Zayn, who's like a really good dude, or Kevin Owens, who's like a really good dude. It's or, <laughs> or yeah, Big Swole, or Big E, or Tyson, I mean, uh, what's the name? Titus O'Neil. Steve well, like, Austin it, seems pretty surprising. Even like sometimes, oh, even Steve like Austin, Steve Austin. Oh, you know what? I'll I'll do you one even better. Kevin Nash is the wokest. Oh yes, guy. Kevin Nash is the wokest. Or even like even CM Punk. Like if you follow CM Punk on Twitter, <laughs> he's a he don't give up. He's not about any of that right wing bullshit at all. Um, so like it's so for like so for every one of those dudes, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Fuck those dudes, but I can also cheer for you know these dudes, and so. It's, it's, I get exactly where you're coming from, but my, I just think that I think that's a microcosm of like a lot. It ties into what we kind of talked about earlier with Shakari Richardson when we were talking about Twitter is that it's, it's this thing where, and you aren't like this old man, but it's this thing where it's like, oh, you like X, Y, and Z? How can you, how can you support the NFL after what they did to Kaepernick? And I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do, bro. Like hey, I like nah, football. Nah. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna put old man off the hook on this one. I don't know if you can hear me, old man, but yo, they definitely they definitely rose me up constantly from my love of the deluxe chicken sandwich at Chick Fil A. Oh, fuck Chick Fil A. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Chick Fil A forever. Oh. That's a little bit different for me. I'm closer to old man on this one because there are alternatives to that, right? So, like, I can go get a Popeye's chicken sandwich, which is fucking better than that anyway. Or yeah, but I don't know if it's better. It just has a different... Sometimes you're just in the mood. But, like, Last if night, I like fucking uh, football, if I like fucking football, what do you want me to watch? Fucking semi-pro bullshit down the street? I'm not watching that shit. You live in Texas. <laughs> I'm pretty sure semi-pro football in Texas is pretty weird. It's bullshit. Anybody who plays really? semi-pro football is a fucking loser. I'm not getting my head beat in for no reason. I barely did that for a scholarship. You think I'm Yo, doing that for nothing? For they fun? Make a couple, they make a couple of hundred bucks a year if they're on a good team after yeah, they spend a couple horrible. of thousand bucks on equipment. But still. But, like if I like, <laughs> but yes, I'm saying, like if I like football, what, what choice do I like? Well, what you're, choice you're do I have? Mecca. That's like the mecca of football. It's yeah, like, I'm saying. Like, you watch high school. I could go watch bullshit bad high school football. No, I don't think I'm not spending my time watching bad anything. Yeah, they're about to kick you out of Texas. For real. It's high school football is bad. Like before, Friday I'm, night lights. That's bro. why I used to like college basketball when it was good, right? And it was good because people used to stay three and four years in college. So yeah. people matured and they got really good while they were in college. Now college basketball is exciting. It's exciting because you don't know what the fuck's going to happen because the good players stay one year and they leave. And even when they're really good, they're fucking 18 years old. And so you can't trust a fucking 18-year-old to throw the fucking shoe across the road. So people love March Madness, right? Because they're like, March Madness is so unpredictable. I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm like, that's exactly why I can't stand March Madness because it's bad basketball. Like, I'm a basketball fan. It's bad quality basketball. They come out and they score fucking 50 to 47, shooting like 30% from the fucking field. And people say it's good defense. No, it's not fucking good defense. Because I watched the NBA and them niggas be playing great defense, and they just be hitting shots in their face. Just I, I, right I, in their I, face. I, I'm, I'm going to put it. Oh, I'll challenge you on um, them playing good defense. But, see, this is the funny thing about the relationship between me and um, Brandon, because we are very much alike. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put an anger meter 
Yo, you had some pretty good rants this episode. I'm gonna put one that I can't. Goes up like, as you get but, it's, or not, like. but it's the same thing with like that's the that, but I tied it all in to finish up this wrestling topic. It's the same thing that kind of with wrestling to me. Like I've been clamoring for someone to push the WWE because WWE got very content because they were by themselves. They owned the wrestling world. And so they were basically like, if you want to watch high quality, like big league wrestling, you got us and that's it. There's nothing else you can watch that's like major league wrestling, like the major league version of wrestling, like NFL, NBA, et cetera. We are the only major league version of wrestling. And so if you want to watch us, if you want to watch major league wrestling, you watch us. And I don't care. And we can do whatever the fuck we want whether it's racist or sexist or just stupid, bad booking, bad ideas, whatever the case may be, what's your other option? You don't got shit. And so then we got this other billionaire who comes out and is like, we're going to give you something different. And this shit at AEW, I don't like. Like, I can't, besides the Young Bucks being terrible people, I can't fucking stand the Young Bucks matches. I hate those shits. They're, 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 they're awful. I fucking hate them. People love them. I fucking hate those shits. But ultimately, the idea that they got enough money and cash say that they can bring big stars in and they do tell some good stories that it's going to push, it's going to create competition. And the last time I saw competition was my favorite moments in wrestling history. Even though some of that shit doesn't hold up in today, that's, uh, you know, it wasn't today, right? So like 1999 was not 2021. So like a lot of, a lot of things we look back on and say that they're fucked up, but a lot of things I have to say, like it's also, not meant to be in today and so the attitude era was great for the attitude era and part of that was the time but also part of it was it was real competition and so seeing i tied it all in to see cm punk walk out there and sell out a fucking basketball arena the united center off of the rumor that he's going to be there and just to see like the genuine joy in people in him was like something you don't see in sports and particularly wrestling that often like that's how i felt when sasha and bianca wrestled on uh, on wrestlemania that's how i felt when kofi fucking won the belt at wrestlemania like those genuine like for every and it's and that's how they get you right for every fuck shit that they do they still bring you those genuine moments that you just don't get in any other avenue like there's nothing else in sports that there's nothing else in sports that is like a great wrestling story told well that you get invested in. Yeah. So yeah, I can agree with that. Um, I'm going to put in fitness. We have a bunch of other topics to get into. Okay. Um, I, know I don't I went know. Wrong. I'm if, sorry. No, 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 no. You're good. I don't know if you and Super Walk have the time to talk about the capitalist conversation, but if you guys want to continue. Um, oh yeah. I know Super Walk's always down for that. So, um, Hob, are you going to stay on or you got stuff to do? I don't know. I'm, but wait, sorry. I was, I was looking up the young bucks and, and, um, and um what you call it <laughs> donald trump because i was curious and these guys look like horrible they like they like the white country um duck you know hunter version of the new day huh rancho cucamonga rancho cucamonga where is rancho cucamonga california outside of la you probably heard of it in next friday uh, all right when uncle elroy moved to rancho cucamonga yeah you're right you're right so um I'm gonna I got like time. I don't have to Maybe. do hindsight until four. So I got time. So how about I do this? I'm gonna end I'm gonna end this portion of the show. Super Bowl, if you went on brand and want to get into the other political topics, um get into them, like send me the audio. I'll add the idea that like, oh hey, uh, you know, I wasn't on this episode, but uh Super Bowl and Brandon got into conversation about XYZ and ABC. Just send me the notes and we'll go from there. How does that sound? Are you leaving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta like it's it's about to rain, dog. I gotta figure out what, what the fuck we're gonna eat. <laughs> all right i mean i gotta eat too that's what i'm saying like i i because I, I i brandon what are you doing tomorrow nothing I, oh, well, we can do this tomorrow then i um depending on the time we can do this tomorrow how about we uh, let me figure out what time me and maria are gonna go shopping uh because we gotta go shopping for food prep and stuff like that this is riveting content i'm pretty sure uh <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, this has been the Old Man Way Show. I want to thank uh, Brandon Carr for coming on here, doing his thing as always. Hey, tell them where they can find where they can find you yelling at yelling in a vacuum on Twitter. Thank you. I miss talking to you. I really love y'all too, man. It's yeah, so thanks. great. We text, but this is even better. We got to oh, talk more absolutely. often. Um, 
but yeah, you can find the Watch Those Series podcast. I haven't been as consistent recently. We're going to try to get back on track. This has been so much going on, but you can check that. That's the the main one, uh, the old OG one. You can find anywhere you get your podcast at. But recently, we have been consistent on hindsight movie reviews. This month, we're actually doing Terminator movies. So okay. to, uh, we did Terminator 1. By the time you listen to this, Terminator 2 will be out. Um, so that's going to be exciting. Um, basically, that's a podcast where each month we have kind of a theme, and we review four or five movies within that theme for that month. Uh, so this month's Terminator, and we've done, you know, different people like Martin Lawrence month or, you know, whatever the fuck. So basically, if you like listening to old mo- people talk about old movies and looking at them in 2021 hindsight, that's what we do there. And then the last podcast is Return to Oswald, which has kind of been getting very popular. It's basically, I never saw Oz before, and Scar and my homeboy Rashani were basically like, how have you never seen the show before? We need to watch the show and review it. So we're going through every episode of Oz. We're oh in God. season three, I, I think, or season four. I don't think season three or season four. I can't remember. But uh, it's starting to jump the shark a little bit. So now oh, the yeah. episodes are going more from, damn, this is a good show. I'm really enjoying it, too. Look how stupid this fucking plot point is. And that's kind of what <laughs> it is. for. And I'm kind of enjoying that, too. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're in, I think, season three or season four of Oz. So not too much longer, but because it's been kind of popular with that format, what we're going to do is after we finish Oz, we're going to move on to a different show. And I think they're doing, what is that show called? Orphan Black on Netflix or something like that? Or I think Orphan, is that what the show's called? Orphan Black? I know there's an Orphan Black, but I don't know if you're referring to the same show. I haven't watched it. But Orphan it's- Black, yes. Orphan Black, I think, is the next show that they chose that we're going to do. Uh, after we do Oz, so go check out Return to Oswald. Um, I, I, I really, really want to get into Oz. There's some shows me and my wife need to get or think about getting into. We may actually start The Sopranos today. Oh yeah, but um, just to put um, tell everyone they can find you on Twitter because you're actually really fun to follow on Twitter because you don't give a fuck and it's great. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at that cool black nerd black is BLK. I haven't been on Twitter that much recently, but I'm trying to get back on more. Uh, Because I do kind of miss Twitter. I get a kick out of Twitter. And uh, like we said on the show, learn a lot from Twitter. But also, I like to have fun. And I tried to, I curtailed my timeline to be a mixture of informative shit, of like learning things about myself and about the world that I didn't know, staying up to date on news and politics and shit like that in sports, and then a bunch of funny people having fun. So that's that's kind of what i look that's what you'll find me talking about on twitter and that's who i follow on twitter yo will you tell hobby that he needs to get on twitter and like use it more often Javi would like twitter i don't know how you get on facebook facebook is the worst to me because i i just feel like facebook full of horrible human beings and it's so hard for me to find people who think like me on facebook i've bro- i've like deleted so many people that i were friends with on facebook because they seem that they either have fucked up values about about uh, uh gay people or they're sexist or the white people that i were friends with were racist or now i'm starting to see a bunch of anti-vax anti-medicine insanity and i'm just like bro my, my i go on twitter i don't see any of that except when someone's really quote, when someone's quote tweeting like someone to dunk on them like we talked about in the show i see that but like none of the people that i actually follow are tweeting any of that stuff when so I go I have, on Facebook, I, I see it every. I see fucked up memes that are misinformation, mm-hmm. quote like sharing articles from websites that are obviously fake that these people believe. And I'm so, like, what's wrong with these people? I, I I I'm I'm in control of one of the old Twitter um, profiles that uh, Old Man had for an older podcast, but we kind of brought it into the Old Man Wave Show mm-hmm. ecosystem. And honestly, when I do go, when I go check it out, like. I don't know who, I don't know if it was you, old man, or somebody else who, who managed that, but it's like, it follows like Tommy Loren and a bunch of other like. Oh, we did that just so we could but, like shit on him. So then that's all I see when I go in there. I see a bunch of like right wing <laughs> talking heads and I'm just like, I don't, you know, I don't care. I'm just saying that like, there's definitely some of that ridiculousness on Twitter. Well. Yeah. Like, so we used to follow it just so we could like shit on it. And that yeah. was just our thing. Like we'd come on there and go, what dumb shit did Tommy Loren say today? Like, Are she still saying dumb shit? I, she's blocked on my Twitter. I, if she yeah. does anything, I can't fucking see it. But um, oh hold on, I got one she, more thing to say. I, I would still snatch the homie though. I'm just saying. One, one more, more thing to say. 
I know there's a lot of nerds that listen to this show. If you like comic books, you need to watch Superman and Lois. Yes. It okay. is the best yeah. portrayal of Superman I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. It's just great. So I, I, just know, have I, haven't, I haven't finished I haven't finished the season yet. Which I gotta watch the season finale too. Uh, but I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. Oh, like yeah. told there's me. nothing but amazing things. Like yeah. honestly. It is funny. I see the characters and like, like I've seen them. And I'm like, oh my God, you look, yeah, this is how I would envision Superman in mm-hmm. Lois looking like. I was like, I love it. And I love the fact that, like, I think his mother made a costume for him and wore it. It was like very old school. I was like, this is great. I was like, it seems very happy and wholesome. So maybe that's, maybe this, that'll be Hurricane watching until um, NXT starts tonight. But yeah, uh, thank you both uh, for doing this. You can find me on oldmanwade.com on Twitter and Instagram. You can find us at the oldmanwade.com Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Oldmanwade.com article should be coming up soon. Um, I've started this new thing. Brand, I don't know if you know about this, but I started this new thing where it's just like stories from Old Man Wade. It's just me talking about like like either my evolution as a person or just like fuck shit that I did. Like I talked about um, how this dude was stealing my sandwiches. So I nut in it and he ate it. And then I told him, like, I was like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know who's been eating my sandwiches, but the joke's on them that I jerked off in it. Oh, I just want you to know, old man, like, uh, a co-worker of mine's gave me a roast beef sandwich, like, randomly. Like, oh, was, you know, here's this roast beef sandwich. I was like, all right, word. Um, and I was going to eat it, but then I thought about that story. And I <laughs> threw it in the trash. Oh. And he asked me, he's like, how was the roast beef sandwich? And I'm like, yeah, it was excellent. You ain't, you ain't gonna catch me off guard. <laughs> but yeah, don't eat my sandwich. You, you ain't gonna get me. Don't have it. Uh, don't start none, don't be none. But also, don't forget to find us on the Culture Comic Book News Podcast, uh, CTBN, on, pot, on Spotify, iTunes, and Spreaker and iHeartRadio. You can, uh, and also the Culture Comic Book News, pot, uh, Culture Comic Book News on Facebook, where literally all we're doing is talking comic book and anime shit. So, really, all we do. Uh, blackrabbit.com blackrabbit.com b-l-a-q-u-e-r-a-b-b-i-t um anybody got anything else reed richards is gonna be black you're still here it's over go home damn it wade